Oh, how are you all doing? You're right. You're right. Uh, first of all, Th Thorn. Is it Thorn? Thorn's over here? Estate agent. I've got a lot more respect for estate agents recently because I've had to start doing viewings for the spare room in my house. <laughs> it's really hard to sell a house when you've got no expertise. I, I just turned into Borat. A lot of people are coming around and I'm just going, this is a chair. Like, <laughs> so, <laughs> fair play to you. It's a skill. I, uh, I, I tried learning up like actual new skills like in, in the lockdown, like a lot of people. Uh, loads of people started like a fitness journey. Um, so I decided to try and do running uh, last year. Uh, I live in East London though, by, Victo uh, by Victoria Park in Bethnal Green. And uh, yeah, it's all right, isn't it? But I went running around Victoria Park and I got outrun by a woman in skinny jeans and Birkenstocks. <laughs> I, I just thought this is humiliating. I'm, I'm not keeping this up. So the, the, the skill that I decided that I might try and pick up and try and stick with, I thought I'm going to try and pick up a second language because loads of people try and do that. Uh, and, and the reason that I decided I was going to try and do this is because I watched a French drama on Netflix. And after about two episodes, I thought, you know what? I've actually retained a fair bit of French from secondary school. Maybe I am a genius. <laughs> and then I watched the third episode about subtitles. Turns out I can just read English really well. <laughs> it's not nearly as impressive, is it? Um, we, we had to do, if, if, if you were single anyway, you had to do like, the, the, the lockdown dating. Did anyone go on like, the, the park dates, going for a walk for a date? It was properly shit, weren't it? And uh, again, mine was in Victoria Park, because that's where the magic happens. <laughs> and I remember, I remember last year, I think, uh, I, think, I think a low point for me was telling my mum about this date. And my mum pinned this really shit date on, on romance being dead now. She was like, well, your generation, you just find people on the apps, don't you? That's a, so you've got no fun stories about how you met. I was like, all right, Mum. But I've heard the story about how you and my dad met. Yeah? So she, the story goes, she's, she goes, uh, so I used to work in this pub, and uh, your dad used to come in. used to come in every day. Every day he'd come in. And uh, he'd always ask me out every day. And I'd always say no, because he was horrible, your dad. He was horrible. <laughs> Wasn't my type. Had a reputation. Had a reputation, he did. But he <laughs> kept coming in, kept asking. And then uh, one day... Uh, it turns out he asked my boss where I live and uh, turned up at my doorstep. I couldn't say no then, could I? It's like, Mum, that's harassment, Mum. That's a... <laughs> Persistence isn't romance. This is, this is, this is problematic. But, but no, apparently meeting people on the apps is a big problem. But after this date that I went on, I do kind of think she might have a point. I ended up chatting to this girl on, on one of the apps and we said, oh, we'll go for a few beers in Victoria Park. And we turned up, had a few cans and whatever. And after a few cans, she said, I really need to go to the toilet. Now, last year, you'll all remember that the public toilets were shut, weren't they, to try and stop congregation. So f for blokes, not a problem. The patriarchy wins again, as always. <laughs> but, but for women, it's a bit of an obstacle, weren't it? And I imagine that, we, I say imagine, because I wasn't watching, just to clarify it earlier. <laughs> I imagine that having to piss in a bush was a bit like a game on the cube with Philip Schofield, do you know what I mean? You had to, you had to find a position where you weren't going to ruin your shoes, so you just kind of, just kind of moving about. So I said to her, I said, if you need to go home, that's fine, that's understandable. But she said, no, it's fine, I'll just go, just go piss in the bushes. I thought, oh, what a, what a modern woman, fantastic. <laughs> so she, she wandered off, she said, I'll be a few minutes. She wandered off to go have a piss in the bushes, I'm just waiting. And uh, she came back after a few minutes, and I noticed as she was walking back to me, she had something in her hand that she didn't have en route to the bushes. And as she's getting closer to me, I'm looking and I'm going, no, surely, surely not. No, maybe it is. No, definitely is a Tesco's bag full of piss. <laughs> yeah. Now the weirdest part was she didn't find a bin on the way back. She just came and sat down and put this bag on the floor. <laughs> obviously I'm British, ain't it? We're just polite, so I'm just... <laughs> I'm just looking at this bag and looking at her, just like, what the fuck? And I, I, I'm thinking this can't get any worse. And then the small talk started up again. And uh, she said, oh, you know, East London again. Do you, uh, do you believe in star signs? What star sign are you? I said, uh, I said, well, I'm an Aries, but I don't really believe in it. And she said, oh, that makes sense, because Aries are skeptics. <laughs> well, fuck, I've proved her argument. Maybe, <laughs> maybe she's onto something. And again, I'm looking at this bag of piss, and she goes, uh, do you know what your birthstone is? I said, well, right now, it feels a lot like rock button, to be honest, but <laughs> we move. And uh, anyway, she, we ended up parting ways, understandably, but it was a lonely time lockdown, weren't it? So I messaged her the next day, and she ghosted me. 
And it just made me think, was it all a weird social experiment? <laughs>